Right, here's another week in review at the IPL, like weeks before it. It's been it's been great fun. There have been some brilliant performances. There have been some fairly disappointing ones. It's it's made your eyes pop out, some of those performances. The Sixers continue to vanish into the stands, making a mockery of uh, all those who say that the boundary ropes must be kept long enough. There are no small Sixers and, uh, and they're just vanishing into the stands. So lots happen at the IPL, as you'd imagine, in a tournament that's, that's almost packaged for that kind of excitement. I thought long and hard and had to select between two and I'll explain that as we go along. But the one I've chosen was uh, Shane Watson 70 from 34 balls for the Rajasthan Royals against the Chennai Super Kings. Now, you tend to get biased, let me be honest, you tend to get a little biased by events that you've seen because uh, where you've been at the ground because you see that unfolding in front of you and you see the magnitude of the shot making that you sometimes don't always see when you're watching on, on a telecast. Now, there was a story behind that game. Uh, the track was doing a fair bit. Mohit Sharma and Jason Holder had bowled a very good spell, fair bit of lateral movement, uh, an absolutely wonderful pitch, good outfield. And as uh, as Michael Hussey said, maybe just uh, just a bit too paced too. And Rahul Dravid had changed the batting order completely, had pushed James Faulkner up, had pushed uh, Sanju Samson up. They are all thinking, hang on, surely it should be Shane Watson. And then Watson came out to bat and, and he played an astonishing innings. And uh, what, 70 from 34 balls. It was almost as if someone had just turned the tap on. It was a very good bowling attack. He was getting those runs again. And that's been a big factor in considering that as the standout performance for me. 81 runs came in five overs. The Chennai Super Kings fans hated me because I was on air for that uh, 81 run period. Stuart Binney was very good in support for him as well. But it's, it's just the way he muscled. Some shots landed in no man's land. That tends to happen when you're turning this game around. But the one six of Jason Holder just to me stood out where he went through the line and hit over long off against a bowler was getting uh, a good amount of bounce. So, so that to me was, was a standout performance. It just embodied what the Royals do. They think through a, a cricket match and back their thoughts. And on this occasion, they backed the idea of Shane Watson coming in as finisher. It was breathtaking to watch. And that to me was a standout performance of the week. Right, what are the highlights then? And some of you might look at this and say, hang on, didn't he watch Kaur and Pollard? It's 66 from 27 against the Sunrisers. Pulled the side back from a, a situation where everything seemed lost. 62 needed from four overs. One with three balls to spare at a canter. That was the other highlight for me. And, and I'm going to explain now why, what, what the difference was between the Pollard innings and the Watson innings. The Watson uh, affair with Stuart Binney, 81 from five against the best bowling on, on, a, on a surface that wasn't the easiest to bat on. And that, that, that is what I considered. But, but Pollard, 66, as I said, from 27 balls. They, uh, the partnership put on 85 in, uh, in six overs. And when Pollard turns it on, it is, it is just incredible. What I liked most about the Pollard innings was, were the flat sixes. Not, not the ones that, that, that went into the stands. I mean, not, not belittling them, but you see those. But the flat sixes, uh, sort of almost big bottom hand, muscling it through. There was something very dramatic about it. So, so that, that Pollard inning, innings was, uh, was, was what I was, was to me very close to the, uh, to the Watson innings for the standout performance, but still one of the big highlights of the week. So to me, those were the twin highlights. Watson and Pollard coming out from a situation where everything seemed lost and then forcing us to ask the question that we must almost ask ourselves every day as this game evolves at breathtaking speed. What is enough? At what point does the bench start to think our batsmen cannot get these runs? At what point do the bowlers start to think, oh my God, what do I do now? And almost get intimidated into bowling bad balls. So the highlights of the week got me thinking about where this game is going. A couple of things that uh, sort of dampen the week a little bit. And uh, the Delhi Daredevils run chase against the Chennai Super Kings in the last of the league phase games in Chennai uh, did it for me. There was, uh, there was still Warner, there was still Sehwag, sadly no, no Jai Vardana. But what I was looking for from the Delhi Daredevils was intent. As if to say, look, we haven't had a great IPL. I know we've let the fans down. The Delhi Daredevils fans have been seriously awesome. I mean, I'm not saying the others haven't, but the Delhi Daredevils fans have been brilliant at their home games. They've turned up, they've kept the faith. And I expected to see a little more intent, a little more desire. I say, come on, guys, let, let's, let us see that we can play other. Warner would go out and play a, a fighting innings. I thought some others would. And it, 
it meandered the game it, it just seemed to flow gently towards a finish that you knew you knew the chennai super kings were going to finish you win as the game wore along it became more obvious but you did see the delhi daredevils challenging the status quo and saying that's not on you know we are we are a side that's proud of ourselves and to me that 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 was a bit of a letdown the other letdown was the pitch in ranchi i mean we've had we had a couple of those i mean it's not fair to single out ranchi alone but uh, this was the game against the royal challengers uh, and the kolkata knight riders you don't want a slow deck where nothing happens i know there's a bit to be said in favor of different surfaces so that's when have to adapt which is little element of the more conventional form of cricket coming in but you can't have a game a, a pitch that doesn't support stroke play otherwise ranchi has been a magnificent addition to indian cricket venues like like raipur is like so many others are but the surface bit of a low down i thought there'd be more spoilers in the week really and uh, and the teams would would go late into this week to be uh, to be sure of qualifying three teams made it straight away uh, the rajasthan royals great fun to watch the mumbai indians playing far more positive and relaxed cricket than they have ever seen them play in the uh, in the ipl and the chennai super kings just so clinical just wonderfully managed and a team to be proud of so three uh, very good teams and, uh, and and teams that deserve to be there made it through now looking ahead the sunrisers hyderabad because of the royal challengers have played themselves into a situation where they control their destiny they play well they go through they don't play well they open the uh, door a little bit for first for the royal challengers if they continue to play badly for uh, for for some of the other teams in the in the contest but they deserve to be in a position where they control their destiny so there's only one team to watch out for in the week ahead and that is uh, that is tom moody sunrisers <laughs>